We are live. Good evening, Art World. Don Victor here, bringing you another episode of the Core 80 Call. We're committed, we're doing it, and even though it's 1147, I got this baby in before the day was done. There was a... uh, a wedding ceremony next door, so they got very, very loud, which was wonderful. Um, but so loud that I couldn't record this video earlier in the day, so finally they're gone. And now it's quiet enough that I can uh, uh, record this video. Uh, this is a neat little painting by uh, Paolo Uncello, and Roman artist and uh, I'm trying to think of uh, the name of the painting I didn't, I didn't know it off the top of my I, I know it I, I'm just trying to um, that's what it is St. George and the Dragon St. Saint, Saint George and the Dragon it's kind of funny actually kind of like Curious George but the Dragon version um I'm going to break down the design of this one uh, here in a minute, but let me just tell you uh, dragons. Slaying of the dragon. Slaying of the dragon. What a beautiful concept. Uh, I have a friend, and we were talking the other day, and she was saying how much she enjoys slaying dragons. She is the dragon slayer. And by dragons, we mean those those inner demons, those inner beasts, those inner monsters, those inner uh, beings, if you will, that get you locked up, you know, get you, hold you back from uh, being all that you can be. And so sometimes we have to become our own hero. And go into those, into that cave, you know, into that cave, into this cave, and go slay some, some dragons. And so uh, sometimes we gotta get up and get our little shield of faith on, and get our little sword of truth. We have the little breastplate of righteousness, you know, and. Uh, Go on in there and, and, and start slaying some dragonies. So, in the last in the last two weeks, I've slayed a major dragon in, in my life. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's interesting because when you do it, it's amazing the part of you that's set free. There's part of you that grows uh, in courage and in bravery, because you went in and you spent time with yourself and you were able to actually slay these dragons. Um, but when you do it, you actually then also free a, a, a part of yourself that you've always loved, but you never really were able to access because it's been bound up, it's been hidden, it's been uh, locked in this cage, up in this castle, whatever you want to call it. And... Um, you know, recently I, I, I spent a little time evaluating the, the the people that I love in my life. And my father, my biological father, uh, he's always been the one who's gotten the most love out of all of the people who've taken care of me, brought me into this world. Um, and recently I had to kind of like just not like like I looked at love being like currency and you were budgeting it right and I decided to audit myself and say I'm not going to love anybody until I go through and actually figure out now as a mature adult why I quote unquote love that person and what did they do to deserve that level of of uh of of love okay and so what i did was i i I 
being raised in foster care, I, I have lots of parents, but there's, there's my mom and my dad, which were foster parents of mine. And then there's my mother, my father, who brought me into this world. And out of the four of them, my father always received the most love that I, you know, from me ever since I was a little kid. Um, but when I went back and I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, he did like the least. And in all honesty, I couldn't really remember anything that he actually did that actually deserved even a fraction of the energy that I have given him over the years. And it, and this might sound like a sad story, but I had to go in and actually slay this fantasy by looking at truth, looking at reality, and then reallocating my, my, my love source, my love resource, if you will. And, uh, and when I did that, it didn't take very long. I mean, within just hours, I could feel the difference of something new coming out of me, something that's always been in there but hidden. And because I misprioritized uh, my love and I was giving it, I was spending it, I was wasting it in a direction that didn't really deserve it. And I'm not saying my dad was a bad guy or anything like that. I'm just saying when I surveyed the land, I realized, you know, I was looking for diamonds and I was playing with, you know, coal, <laughs> you know, and and coal has a certain value. But, you know, I was look, I was searching for diamonds and I was playing with broken glass, you know. <laughs> so, um but I had to take that time and go in my own mind, go in my own heart, go in with a spear, a truth, you know, right in and be my own warrior, be my own St. George, be my own, you know, knight so that I could save that part of me who was the damsel in distress, the bride, right, um, the queen, who has access, who, who, who uh, is regal. But that dragon, that fantasy, that illusion was keeping, keeping that being locked up, chained up, not being able to access what is hers. And, uh, and so I encourage you, take some time, you know, to take some time and, and go back and reevaluate the people, the things that you put your energy into, um, and, and make sure that audit them, audit them, make sure that where you're putting your energy and, and your hopes and your dreams and your fantasies and your love and whatever, that it deserves that level of energy, that level of, uh, focus. And so... On that note, because at the Academy we have the motto, as in art, so in life, that's why we want to take time to begin to not only look at the composition of a work of art, but also how we've composed our own life, how we've told our story. Because sometimes the stories are beautiful and the composition is spot on. Sometimes our intent might be to move you here, but we end up moving you over here because we're not designing correctly. We're not putting the energy and the effort in an intelligent way in the right place. We're not aligning things as they ought to be aligned. And so uh, it's a beautiful process when you go through and, you're, and you can actually, you know, you feel that you're, you're, you're quantum leaping in your own growth. So... Let's go ahead and take a look at this painting. With that in mind, we're going to look at St. George. Putting this big old spear through the eyeball, through the nose, through the face of El Dragon. There's a lot of neat things going on in here. Um, a lot of movement. A lot of... <clears throat> thrust uh 
I do like how her head becomes the highest point of contrast. If you squint your eyes, she almost glows against the back, that dark background. And so we're going to go ahead and first look at our thrust map. So again, she's the high point of contrast. The dominant vertical is going to be from the top of that cave to down to this patch of grass. It's the longest vertical in the piece here. Horizontal is really that, that thrust that's coming through uh, her in the, in, the, in the landscape in the background. The dominant diagonal is the lance. You can see it here. And then what's interesting with the dominant arc, this is um, pretty cool what, what happens here is there's, there's actually a couple, but I mean, you have this, when you first come in, you have this big arc of the cave, which then shoots you over to the right-hand side of the painting. And then when you get over into this, I, I guess it's a cloud formation or something, it kind of like spins you around and then it kind of shoots you out and it comes down the diagonal of the lance. So it's almost like rather than him just going, eh, and like stabbing the the um, the dragon, it's like by having your eyes spin around that little area and then come out, it's like a building up or a winding up of this energy. Like he's like, Aah! right, and then he, and he pushes the spear into the into the dragon, rather than just being a direct. Mm, this is a. Aah! And it's just cool. I like how they did that. And then if you look at the horse, which is cool, you can come up through the horse as well, and it comes right back into that, that diagonal as well. So I haven't really seen this happen before where they're using these, these, these curving movements and then it flows into a dominant diagonal. I think it's a brilliant strategy to use in a lot of different scenarios. Um, and it's something I want to... Uh, look to do as uh, well because as your eye moves through it it takes longer to move down the diagonal because it has to come across and then spin around itself and then in itself and that kind of stuff and that's totally fine because it's just building up this energy as long as it's working and your eye actually is moving through it and and, and your eye doesn't get stuck then it then it achieves what it's supposed to be doing it's like this revving up and then release and um, I just think it's really, really brilliant how, uh, how pa Paolo did this. Now, one thing I want to look at is what we would call an energy map at the Academy. One could even call it a gesture drawing. But if you look at the, the, the curvature of the, of the dragon, right... Um, it's like he's creating a wall between between uh, Saint George and 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 the woman, and he's trying to protect it. And so this is one thing that you want to do when you're composing your own artwork is you want to really think about what is it that you're trying to communicate, and how can you do that at an energy vibe level. And in this case, you can see how the dragon bends. Here's the original. You see how. The dragon is distorted, it bends itself, and it just, and then it also even flows into her dress. But um, it really kind of feels like he's putting a wall, and, and, and the wall extends past his physical form, and you can feel the wall. Your eye keeps traveling along the wall, even though physically there is no wall there because of the way it's designed. And then coming against it, you can see this reverse curve, the curve coming the opposite way. Now, now this feels like it's a, it's a, it's a power that's coming onto this dragon, right? Uh, that's coming against it, and so you can see the curves that are built up into the horse, and in the edge of the the, the cave here. Again, just this, bam, this clash. <laughs> And then you have this beautiful, you know, the, the diagonal of the lance is also repeated in the wing and also repeated up here in the tail and the edge of the cloud. You see how that edge of that cloud comes down through here. All of that stuff is repeated to bring clarity, to bring um, uh, certainty, certainty about what you're looking at. And what you're looking at is St. George 
uh, piercing the dragon. So if we break it up into grids, uh, this is going to be looking at our mother grid and our armature. You can begin to see uh, the dotted line is the, the line of the of the lance, but you can see how um, that 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 diagonal is also mimicked in the image itself, and so uh, in other areas, and so they're sharing this common angle, this common thrust, but. As you look through the image, you can see kind of like where the one dragon's where the dragon's um, wing is, how it's constructed, meaning uh, like how it's placed, how what's the layout of it. You know, it's going through that dominant baroque here. You can see parts of that cloud in the back being formed um, through the top of the head of the knight, through the top of his horse. You know, coming down. And then I love this, like where the little red drool blood is coming out of the dragon's mouth. Look at that. Bam, right there on that, uh, on that reciprocal line. So these are cool. So on the Core 80 website, core80.com, which will be up in a few days. So if you go there now, there's probably nothing there. But it will be up in a few days. And if you're listening to this in 2017, then it's already been up. So go there and check it out. And what I want you to do is when, 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 you, when you get there is to sign up for these videos. So we're, once we record them, then we do our thing. We put them on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll put them inside that community, inside that website. And you all inside the website, you're going to get access to these slides. So I'll have the slides posted there so that you can go back and review all this stuff for yourself and actually look at the slides that resonate with you the most. And you don't have to kind of like, you know, go through the video and press pause. Um, but there's just a lot of coincidences. I like the, the coincidence of the dragon's leg and how it fl fl um, lands right in there. And then it comes up through the um, through the wing. Um, you can see kind of like even the whole construction of, of, of the dragon's face is locked into the grid. So a lot of this is very, very intelligent work. And here's another grid. These are just the overlapping uh, squares. This is your baited square here. You can see how it's forming part of the horse, the fo footing of the horse, um, that whole entire edge of the of the cave. It's giving you major directions, like the back of the foot for the um, for the dragon. So it's giving you a lot of great information. And uh, that's it, I guess. So yeah, so this is the little painting for today. But I think my favorite part is uh, just looking at this beautiful winding up and then release into a dominant diagonal. I think there's just something there that's so gorgeous, so beautiful, so simple, so powerful, and a lot of people can use it. So if if you didn't get anything from this video, then, you know, replay it and listen to it again. If you did get something from the video, then I would make sure that you one of those things is the idea of this winding up and releasing into, in this case, a dominant diagonal, um, which then brings you the key point of action and slays, slaying in that, that dragon. So, cool. That's uh, today's little show. It is 12.05, uh, and so we got the show in, and we're going to call it done. All right? Um, if this video resonates with you and you want to learn how to compose at this higher level, and you want to learn how to compose profound artwork, we have lessons that you go through. We have 12 lessons that you go through, and we, we put you through a 40-day boot camp, online boot camp, where you're going to build out five images. You're going to build out five images using our composition um, 
technique and tools and and things like that. Um, and the reason why we have you focus on five five uh, images is because we want you to really learn the process. And the way we've figured what we figured out is if you go through the process and you focus on five paintings, if you're a painter, let's say, and you have to do line strategy, let's say you're on that level, that's that that at that stage, you're at that lesson. But when you go ahead and you apply that to all five images, you really, really begin to learn this information. And when the time comes and you have to figure out how to use the V-grids and you're doing it at the same time on five different images, then guess what? You're really, really learning how to master the V-grids. And so uh, when we launch the uh, Core 80 website here in a few days, uh, go there. That You'll be able to sign up for the Core 80 at that point. You'll be able to catch the back uh, videos that we've done. So if we let's say release it on on uh, monday that'll actually be uh video 25 can you believe we're already 25 days into it how cool is that so um you know we got 75 more videos to go and one of the things that i had to slay uh one of the dragons i, I had to personally slay over the last few days is understanding like i'm running a marathon here I'm not running a sprint. And when you run a sprint, you prepare differently. Heck, with a sprint, you probably don't even really prepare. You do a little stretching, and then you just, bam, you go. But if you're running a marathon, you got to prepare very, very differently. And the Core 80 is a marathon run. And it's a marathon run that's so worth it. So we want to see 80 to 100 of you guys signing up for... Core 80 training. Uh, it is a composition boot camp, and you will, you will, because I ain't gonna let you slack off. I'm not gonna let you uh, sabotage yourself. So you will work. You will work very hard, and you will grow, and you will grow fast and deep. You will become a very profound storyteller and a profound artist and uh that's it if that's what you want you know where to come i'll see you guys tomorrow you can see i'm like really trying to fight not falling asleep because it is past my bedtime but you guys are that important to me so i want to make sure that i deliver what i said i was going to deliver so that when you come and you start studying at the academy, if I say, hey, if you do this, this is going to happen, you know you can believe me because I've been committed to, to this. And um, on that note, arrivederci. Ciao. And I'm going to try, actually, you know what I'm going to start doing from now on? i got to figure out how to say it. But I want, I want, to, I want to say that, I want to add to that, in Portuguese. Boinoite. Boinoite. I think that's how you say it. Good night. Ciao.